And I'm back at the Redhead Gallery at 401 Richmond, and I'm here at Margie Kelk's show, Nowhere Ness, which is actually somewhere Ness because I just said where we were. Uh, Margie, this is looks a little different from the last show I saw, and as soon as I walk in, my first thought is it's a million years from now, and some alien culture is doing an interpretive center about humans. Um, there seems to be a good example of human communities and uh, human faces, the most the most important thing we value about each other, besides our, our money, I guess. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a real civilization feel to this, to this show. I know you talked a little bit about social networks for, uh, for the reason behind this, but everywhere I go in this gallery, there's some little figures looking at me. Um, and this time, I'm pretty happy it's not my imagination. They're actually there. So as we enter the gallery, can you uh, talk a little bit about... Uh, uh, the arrangement of the show. I see there's paintings versus uh, some technology containers with the humans represented in between, and then there's this uh, wonderful slash creepy little village in the middle, again, full of people who are watching you, watching, watching them, which I, I apologize to all the ABBA fans out there. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the arrangement? I certainly can, Chris. Uh, when you do walk in the gallery, the idea was that you would see the encaustic pieces, which are the what you call the paintings, they're actually drawn with ink on a wax base, wax and down on orange base. And what they are showing is an environment seen by people who are, for whatever reason, cut off from society, whether it be because they have no virtual connection or whether they have, have some mental instability and are therefore isolated and like, therefore alienated. Like my teenage son when he loses his cell phone. Well, very much so, because okay. he's so dependent on it. And this, this is what his world looks like. Uh, Probably. Barren, barren and really upset. Yeah, this, this does look a bit There's like... There's no warmth in it. A little bit like Hamilton. Oh, well... When he loses his cell phone, anyways. Okay, I'll, I'll take that, <laughs> since you're from Hamilton. <laughs> anyway, um, what I'm thinking of here is, particularly I was aware of some of... Uh, I had some elderly parents, and I had an elderly uncle... And they were, again, isolated, uh, computer networking, which is so common today among the young, was not there for them. They were completely isolated, and therefore, they lost, they lost uh, cognizance of the outside world, and they began to distrust it, which a lot of the elderly will. They won't use banks. They'll put all their money in a mattress, under the mattress, for example. So I was thinking of the elderly particularly, but then I also talked to other people who had had children who had some sort of, either they were computer geeks and had lost all, uh, were having problems with the real world, could no longer function in it, couldn't say hello, how are you. There were some of these, there were also people who have mental incapacities in other ways and basically live on the streets. So they are, they're isolated, they do ask for money, but they, they are, their world is not a, friendly one. It's, it's scary. It's, it's not happy. Well, so it's not red. that technology is causing this kind of, lack of technology is causing this kind of problem. It's that the introduction of technology helps address these mm -hmm. uh, chronic problems in our civilization. It does. It makes us much more aware of them. But the other problem is that when they, a lot of people who are cut off from it, it's an ironic thing because we have never been so connected virtually. And yet there are so many out there. And actually the Global Mail has done a I guess it was last year they did a whole week on people who were isolated and uh, losing their mental capacity because of this. Uh, being alone is, is a very, very uh, bad state to be in because you, you, uh, you start to lose other functions. Right. So these, well, these sculptures you were just looking at are people alone living in their homes. Um, they are of people living in their homes. They do not have any real connection. And they're on a printed surface board, printed, yeah, printed circuit board, only to push the idea that there is such a uh, separation between the virtual world and what's happening with them. So it's, it's an ironic, ironic thing that in a world so very uh, much in touch with things, we still have people more and more isolated. And there has been quite a few things uh, articles about that, that, that they can be more and more isolated. Even, even a child on a computer on Facebook never has to really meet his friends. Hmm. You know, it's, uh, it can isolate as well as bring together. 
Well, uh, for me, it was, it was, you know, having at least two babysitters, the TV and social media, you know, and then I could just go out and enjoy right. myself, and then they never even know I was gone. But what, what this makes me think of is um, the, essentially the extinction of the extended family. Oh, absolutely. introduction of the yeah. Industrial Revolution, which introduced the nuclear family because mm -hmm. it's more economically beneficial. And so this is a technologically manufactured substitute. Absolutely. A century right. later, yeah. with, you know, addressing these problems that I would imagine would be addressed by an extended family. Normally, uh, would, have, would yeah, happen, yes. Normally, so it's kind of a, you know, getting a synthetic, um, synthetic uh, drug instead of sort of taking a herbal remedy in, in a way. And how many people are put in nursing homes who are completely lost there, do not, do not understand it, they have nobody to talk to because really they are, they've been pushed there and they don't want, they don't want to be there. They've no. been uprooted. They've been in a home for how many years? And suddenly, they, it's understandable today because you don't, they, people live longer, you don't have the nursing staff to, to take care of them. But on the other hand, uh, a lot of them go right downhill because they don't have the intellectual or social stimulation that they would normally get. Absolutely. In a, in a social group. Yeah, and it'll be nice when that is more properly addressed. Now, speaking of. Uh, uh, parents, when I saw these, I thought, oh, these are exactly the kind of, like, iPads my parents would like. Or it could be the nightmare they have, what they think is going to happen to them. I think this more the nightmare they yeah, have. Yeah, well, they've just been given an iPad by my, by my oh, brother. That, if they learn to use it, it'd be great. Well, yeah, yeah if one of, the, one of their kids are around, they definitely know how to use it. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, right. <laughs> and that's the idea. I actually got the idea that it's an iPad, and the idea here was not only... It, it does talk about technology and people being linked, but it also talks about you're now staring through a window at these people who are not communicating with anyone. If you look at the faces, they're in their own world. I mean, some of them are looking up for whatever reason. Some of them are just staring out. Some of them look like they're insane and probably would be. Um, but we're examining them now through the computer. You know, computers now take our, our way of talking to them or looking at them instead of a talking or dealing with them straightforward in That's a social true. context. But, you know, sometimes you just want to phone your parents instead oh, of... I know. <laughs> sometimes you definitely want to phone them. You don't want to go near them. <laughs> well, Margie, this is a really well... Um, well done show. How long did it take you to prepare for this? I mean, yeah. I know all your life. You're going to laugh, Chris. It's been two years. It's yeah. been two years. Yeah, well, that's not, I'm not going to laugh. That's a, no, when, I believe when, that. When you do uh, the ceramic work, and a lot of that was done in, in a place called Dish Gallery in the distillery run by Susan Card, they take, uh, she's helping with them, and she's, they take quite a long time to do a silly house because ceramics, it's hard to make it straight. You know, when it goes in the kiln, it might buckle, it might have another problem. And I was new to ceramics, so I needed a lot of guidance. So. You know, I hear there's a lot of, uh, you know, Blackberry tablets you can make, use to build the houses next time. Yeah, you can, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're probably going to be pretty cheap pretty soon. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got a good friend on rim, on the board. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> we don't talk about it with him. <laughs> well, this is, uh, this is probably what the board of rim looks like right now. <laughs> <laughs> it might well be, unfortunately. Uh, got, you know, they're, they're struggling. They're, they say they're going to do it. I hope they do. Well, it'd be uh, nice for Canada, anyway. Margie, thanks very much. Anytime. Thank you.